Hello friends, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can perform the incremental radius uh, stamping simulation of uh, stamping part using Hyperform's incremental radius. For that, change your user profile to Hyperform's incremental radius. So now we are in the incremental radius GUI. Let's just import our die skin or uh, cat geometry. Uh, I'm using the die skin as the uh, which I have created in the earlier process uh, by using die module. Or you can simply just, uh, if you have the uh, geometry made in the other CAD software, you can simply import that one. I'm just importing the die cavity or a die skin uh, for, and will generate a blank surface. After that, point and matter will be extracted from this die skin. Uh, if you don't want this process, you can create that uh, all the parts in the CAD uh, software and then import them uh, directly into the into the performance incremental radius. Uh, and then you can, after matching them, you can uh, use the auto process menu for simulation for running for creating the model form simulation. Okay, but right now as I'm having only the die component, uh, I have to uh, work a little. I have to perform a little geometry work on that. Let's just uh, check whether the geometry is clean or not. For that, just go to geometry, then pick it panel, or simply press F11 for that. That's a shortcut key for key for that. First of all, check. Let's check in the model what we have. We have a single component. Let's just rename it as die. I would recommend you to uh, rename the component uh, simply with the same name as your uh, what type it is indicating. So that means if you have if you are creating a blank component, uh, then just rename it as the component as blank. If you have punch, rename it as punch. This is because the software in the uh, tool setup process will or in the auto process menus will uh, detect detect the appropriate components and uh, for that purpose it uses the file name if, and that, that's why if you have the same name as the type of the component then the uh, software can automatically and correctly choose the uh, correct component for the current uh, correct type okay uh, so right now we have in the geometry club panel quick edit panel and we can see that there are some red edges and as you know red edges should not be there in the inside of the geometry or also, also if there are yellow lines they are also not recommended red edges to indicate that there are some gaps in between uh, the two surfaces and yellow edges or yellow lines will indicate that there may be duplicate surface so, so you don't want both of these uh, colored components uh, for that purpose we miss you have you should have only green color inside for all the lines and surf, uh, surface edges and red edges can be at the outer periphery as they indicate the trim line of the part so to remove these red edges or we need to suppress them or we need to toggle them and for that just click on this toggle edge option uh your tolerance you can enter as 0.1 or 0.2 i will not go beyond 0.3 uh, it's somewhere sometimes we need to increase the tolerance let's just keep it as 0.1 right now and try to toggle these edges um before actually uh before i proceed i must say that actually uh, this uh, this part is symmetric about this line so i can trim this Surface is uh, trim this part into two parts along and this edge, and then then work on geometry cleanup. Just work for geometry cleanup on only one part and one half of the part, and then I will uh, after completion of the geometry cleanup of that half part, I will reflect that clean part to the near opposite side, and then we will have the uh, completely clean model or uh, geometry of the model. For trimming, I will use edit and surfaces. With planes or surfaces, I will either select all the surfaces or you can select only the middle or only the surfaces nearby the trim line. That will be easy. Mm. Uh, we have to trim, we want to trim it is along the visor plane. So, normal 20 tax axis, choose the base point anywhere on the visor plane. Okay, now let's just click on trim. Okay, now the part is trimmed. You can see the new green line created over here. Now, we will delete the half part. For that, press F2 or can you can go there by geometry and delete and surfaces. Uh, we need to check for the so we need to click for the surface filter. Uh, select the surfaces and then say delete. We run for these surfaces again. We have to delete go into delete panel by pressing F2. Delete the surface too. Now, let's go back to the quick edit panel. Press F11. Okay, now we'll repair this geometry. While doing this, you need to take care that the geometry or the should not violate to the actual design. To the actual design, as uh, right now, uh, if you increase the tolerance beyond certain limits, beyond certain limit, the geometry may get violated. Okay, we'll see this later on. We need special uh, working on that to remove those red edges. 
little videos in the geometry may be not available. Uh, as you can see, the curve is getting something uh, that one. Okay, this is a negative from its actual entry. But it's my new change, so I can ignore that. In the wireframe mode, you can see the clearly inversion of the images. You can see those two images in the list by you. Okay, fine. If you accidentally click, like the, uh, click on any one of these green edges, you can suppress them easily. And if you accidentally click on the green edge, already, which is already green, uh, this has been suppressed. So you need to again toggle it, uh, again unsuppress it, and for that, just right click on that edge. Okay, for these surfaces, we need some special tension. Uh, okay. Uh, for that purpose, we'll mask the surfaces uh, for simplicity. So for masking, you can use the shortcut key F5 and mask the surfaces okay. mask the related or, or uh, nearby surfaces right. and say reverse all ok now you can delete this surface and we create this surface for that we will go to create the surfaces and then we are on line first time is like this Consist of the path by which the line should be carried. Okay, this is created. So we should unmask all and then we press F5 and say unmask all. Okay. And we press F3 to view. Okay, we need it. need it. No correction. Okay, fine. That's fine. It's a little irritation, but it's acceptable. Okay, now we need to come on this area. We can again mask those surfaces. Now that we have 5, we can get an anchor in black command. We are masking the neighbor, 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 neighbor surfaces. Okay, the neighbor surfaces. Okay. So again, I think the same trick can be used at delete uh, these surfaces and then create new one. I can delete this surface also and I will create single surface like this. Okay, the first time will be this and the path will be this. Surfaces and now get back into the FPL one. We get it back from these edges. I think something when we are, I think we need a little more attention over here. Okay, okay. now we will delete these surfaces. Create new surfaces here. Create surfaces. Now we use these features by neutral pillar. We need the lines, we can use this option. Okay, that's the best. Maybe. We just filled the pa that patch. Now let's go back to the wireframe mode and press F11. Now let's just see if there are any red edges left. No. Now the geometry, this half part is pretty. Uh, Cleaned, so we can reflect this half part. For that, back to the, the geometry, reflect the surfaces. Select the tool tag window and select the surfaces. For that symmetric uh, plane will be wiser, so perpendicular to that. For normal to that will be x-axis. Select the base point over the anywhere in the xy plane, as a wiser plane. And then we want the, both the surfaces, both the half parts. So we will say duplicate to the component and reflect. It's fine. Now again, we need a little correction because as you can see in the quicker panel again this is there is a red edge it's still indicating that there are these two half parts are distinct one so we need to merge them again toggling them down okay I accidentally clicked on that green already green edge so now it's getting so I know it has suppressed I need to again unsuppress it though so I will right click on that okay now it is again green Could do this using the auto cleanup option, but maybe sometimes the geometry if it is too complicated, you need to do it manually. Or if you directly go to auto cleanup option, it can violate your geometry from the actual one. So, uh, there are in such cases, you need to do that manually. Okay, now we have perfectly cleaned up geometry. We can now go for the further process of two setup where we'll be creating punch and binder. Oh, before we need that, we need to create 
blank component so create a new component name it as blank give it some different color and now just create a rectangular surface drag it on the Select this line as the first line, and actually, this option is okay. Line is already been selected now. Line B is to be the path to it. Okay, drag. Okay, that's also the newly created surfaces. I think blue region indicates that it's still being in the type component. We need to organize it into blank component. So, just select that component, that surface, and set destination component to blank and move it. Okay. I think we should translate it some some distance apart from die. So we will go to geometry and translate the surface. Select that surface and then move it a little higher. Okay. Now let's just go back to the uh, go to the actual incremental process. For that I I prefer to use Utility Browser. So you can use Utility Browser. Utility Browser. Process, browser. Uh, find this menu. Set up menu and in the find tool. Set up button. Okay. Click on the radio button for build and set up the die surface. If you are having the die cavity imported, if you have the point component, you can use that this option. The blank component has already been selected by software. Then automatically, uh, search, uh, automatically search for the component, and it has we have given the same name to the component blank. Uh, it has automatically detected that. So let's uh, change the thickness. Uh, so the final surface for the. Uh, Selecting this surface is not fine. I choose fine. I will toggle this option to single acting. And I will say fill. It's perfect. This is my pink colored basic punch. My color is yellow colored and it's above the blank. That's what I wanted. Uh, this is the exact setup that I wanted. So I will see close. And now I will directly go to auto process from the utility browser. In this option, I will select double action draw as I want binder motion too. So I, will, I have chosen this double action draw. Uh, now, as you can see, I named the component as what they are indicating. That's why punch has been already selected by the software as punch, and likewise binder and bank and die etc. Here, you should check this before you go for these options. That if you have drawbits, you should you should say yes. And then you will invoke the draw read options. And right now, I'm not having any drawbits, so I will say no. Symmetric constraints I don't have symmetry, but still. I I am inspired by geometry, it means I'm my dazzle is too small. So solving period will not be much higher. That's why I don't need to create half part and then use symmetry option and then uh, run the process with that half part model with symmetry conditions. If you have complex geometry big model then you can use the symmetry option. Okay, uh, draw direction is my okay. uh, my punch should go like this towards a positive C axis. Axis, so I say draw direction as positive Z. Motion type velocity, datum blank, thermal options are off. The blank machine is of shell type, so I will choose your shell. If you have solid, you can choose solid. So uh, go to blank, component has already been properly selected. You can choose the material, I don't want it selecting the material. CSBQ is fine for me. I will change the thickness and then go for that. I have components already, already been properly selected. Point is also the same case. These values I will not change, I will use it as an auto position option which will automatically calculate the appropriate distances and uh, accordingly it will set up my geometry positions and then I don't need to uh, increase the values. Just because it's one velocity to 2005 is respected to five. Okay, for finder I will change the load as to turn and then type as force if you can choose cap also. I don't want to use it at all. So with this setup I will say auto position, proceed. Now it is calculating auto positioning and then we calculate the distance between punch and die. And it don't make a appropriate values and then try that here. It has done it properly. So we can go for apply option. And now we will create new put for the solver 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 for the solver. Instead of running this one over here, the thing I just done, I close this panel and uh, now I can choose to 
of the models. We have an entire value as uh, the one is getting into the top person that will uh, use that will be used for solving the model. I'll enter a uh, code as I have I want to use uh, four codes of my PC. And I can run animation. Uh, it's just to have a glance over what is going to be. Uh, that's fine. Now I can check on the click on the option. Now I'll do I think it's because of the file name. Just keep it simple. We can save it as with a simple name and so use a unique value. That we go back to run. This one. And fine. There maybe because of the file name it was too long. We still simple in the file names. Okay, now we can just create an animation file. Just uh, be patient for solving. Solve before that it as it takes much considerable time for solving. I think it's about to complete by now. Okay, the solar process is done. Now we will use results. Again, uh, in the utility browser, go, by, uh, go to report generator. Check all the result types that you want. Select any one of these result files. And click on export mode as open results. And say generate. Okay, now it will invoke. It is invoking a new window of Hyperview. It is a post processor for viewing results from Hyperverse. Ignore the error messages if any. And now here is our entire setup. These are the playback options. You can click on play option to view the animation. Plot. You can scale this. Now, oh, sorry, slow down this uh, animation plot. Okay. So, you know, let's just hide the punch and die in mind. This is blank. I think we should um, take. Uh, I think we should take a little large means larger blank uh, lengthwise. It is fine. Still, it is fine. We have to view the results. So just click on Contour. And then select your result type that you want, and then everything will be simple. Simply click on apply. Okay. With the last frame, click on this option, this button, and now you can see the percentage thing results. It's uh, to view the red edges may be indicating uh, relatively are having uh, maximum thinning, and the blue ones are indicating relatively larger thickness values. This maybe there is something like this. We know the exact position of the maximum thinning. We can go to this option. Major option. And then click on static and max and then uncheck the minimum. So it's the position is the location where we can where it's having maximum percentage tick X. It's 21.37%. We can export these results into H3D model. Okay. Also, you can export, publish these results into PowerPoint data in HTML format. Now, let's move back to HyperForm. You can export these results into HTML format and then click on export actions as JPEG or H3D or AVI. AVI will contain video, JPEG will contain the images. Okay, now it will invoke about your uh, default browser, internet browser. Okay, these are the results. The field curve. That's all with the auto, uh, auto process. Thanks for watching.